Orbital refueling is a game changer for Starship, not only for lunar missions, but for unlocking interplanetary travel across the entire solar system. But in an unexpected twist, the Department of Defense has identified a groundbreaking application for this orbital gas station, one that no one saw coming. So what did they discover, and how do they plan to capitalize on it? Let's dive into the minds of military strategists and uncover their game plan on today's episode of Great SpaceX. On February 6th, Gary Henry, senior advisor at the Defense Innovation Unit and former SpaceX executive, revealed that the agency is working with SpaceX to explore how Starship's in-space refueling capabilities could serve a broader range of users. Henry noted that this initiative began during his tenure at SpaceX when the company proposed that Starship's refueling architecture could be expanded to benefit the wider space community. While I was at SpaceX, we suggested that this could be a great platform for hosting refueling capabilities that would benefit the broader community, he recalled. We wanted to explore innovative ways to leverage this technology and potentially develop standards that could be utilized by everyone moving forward. Imagine it like gas stations in orbit, allowing spacecraft to travel far beyond Earth without the need for enormous fuel tanks at launch. Despite growing interest in orbital refueling, its priority within the U.S. military remains uncertain. Reports suggest that the Space Force considered cutting space mobility funding from its proposed fiscal year of 2026 budget, raising concerns among industry insiders about the future of in-space refueling initiatives. However, Henry emphasized that having an orbital gas station is not just an engineering breakthrough, it's a strategic necessity. He argued that the ability to refuel spacecraft in orbit provides an unparalleled tactical advantage, stating, being able to maneuver in a way that your adversary cannot on orbit is one of the key differentiators that will deter and ultimately, if necessary, win a conflict on orbit. He further highlighted the sheer potential of in-space refueling, explaining, You can refuel on orbit an LEO and add 9 kilometers per second to your vehicle. You pretty much unlock the solar system at that point in time. This push for innovation aligns with ongoing efforts by private companies, particularly SpaceX, which is steadily advancing its in-space refueling technology for Starship, a critical capability for deep space missions, including lunar landings and interplanetary travel. Speaking at the NASA Advisory Council's Human Exploration and Operations Committee last year, Amit Kshatriya, NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator for the Moon to Mars program, emphasized a major breakthrough in this field. During Starship's third integrated test flight, SpaceX conducted a pioneering in-flight propellant transfer demonstration under a NASA tipping point contract awarded in 2020. The goal was to transfer at least 10 metric tons of liquid oxygen from a header tank to the main tank of the Starship upper stage while in orbit. This demonstration showcased a fundamental step toward establishing orbital refueling infrastructure. The flight also achieved key milestones, including reaching its planned orbit and completing a full-duration ascent burn, both crucial for Starship's role in future Artemis lunar landing missions. Kshatriya further outlined a roadmap for the next major step, the Starship Propellant Transfer Demonstration. This initiative will culminate in a mission where two Starships dock in orbit, with one transferring propellants to the other. If development progresses on schedule, this demonstration could take place as early as 2025. The mission plan involves launching two Starships from Starbase. First, a target Starship will enter orbit, followed three to four weeks later by a Chaser Starship. Upon reaching orbit, the Chaser will rendezvous, dock, and transfer propellant to the target vehicle. Once the process is complete, both Starships will undock and deorbit. This test will pave the way for an uncrewed demonstration of the human landing system Starship, which will involve refueling the vehicle in orbit, sending it to the moon, and demonstrating its ability to land and take off from the lunar surface. However, before these tests can proceed, SpaceX must address several key technical challenges. One of the most pressing issues is understanding how propellant sloshing affects Starship's maneuvers and how to maintain settling thrust while docked to ensure efficient fuel transfer. The point of their flight test program before we do this is to make sure they fully understand the slosh dynamics, fully understand how the eulage is being maintained, what the settling thrust needs to be, Kshatriya explained. We've gone through it with them in terms of their plan for this. It's a good plan. 
Another major challenge is the extreme environment of space, where direct sunlight can cause propellant leakage and boil off, critical factors that must be managed for long-duration fuel storage. SpaceX may adopt a solution already used on its Dragon spacecraft, a specialized thermal control coating known as Z-93C55. NASA astronaut Don Pettit has described this coating as snow white due to its distinct appearance. Developed by Allian Science and Technology Incorporated, Z93C55 is applied to Dragon's cargo section to protect it from the harsh conditions of space. This two-part system consists of a pigment and a binder solution with special additives to enhance electrical conductivity without compromising thermal control properties. The coating is designed to withstand extreme temperatures and the intense stresses of launch and orbital operations. Michael Kenny, senior chemist at Allion, explained the significance of this technology. For decades, Allion has produced coatings to protect against the rigors of space. As space missions evolved, there was a growing need to dissipate electrical charges that build up on the exteriors of spacecraft, or there could be damage to the spacecraft's electronics. Allion's research led us to develop materials that would meet this goal while also providing thermal controls. The outcome of this research was Allion's proprietary Z-93C55 coating. Before being widely implemented, the coating underwent rigorous testing. Allion subjected it to extensive laboratory evaluations before providing samples for NASA's Materials International Space Station Experiments 1 and 2. These experiments exposed various materials to the extreme conditions of space, including atomic oxygen, direct sunlight, and severe temperature fluctuations. The goal was to assess their durability and performance in real-world orbital conditions. Z-93C55 performed beyond expectations on MISSE, so it is now a viable alternative to the standard thermal control coatings, Kenny stated. The flight data provided through the MISSE experiments was essential to its development. This breakthrough could prove invaluable for Starship's refueling infrastructure, helping to minimize propellant loss and extend the viability of in-space fuel depots. As SpaceX continues to refine its approach, these advancements bring Starship one step closer to revolutionizing space travel, supporting sustained lunar exploration, and unlocking the potential for human missions to Mars and beyond. Another promising installation technology that SpaceX could employ for Starship's in-space refueling system is Spray-On Foam Insulation, or SOFI for short. Originally developed for cryogenic tanks on space launch vehicles during the Apollo program in the 1960s, SOFI was later refined and widely used during the space shuttle program. The primary function of this insulation is to minimize heat transfer, thereby preserving the cryogenic propellant needed for space missions while maintaining structural efficiency with minimal added mass. Although SOFI has primarily been utilized for non-vacuum applications, its potential for in-space cryogenic storage has been studied. The main limitations of SOFI are its susceptibility to weathering and repeated thermal cycling, which can degrade its performance over time. However, since a starship serving as a fuel depot would remain in orbit, avoiding the repeated stresses of launch and atmospheric re-entry, these issues would be less concerning. Implementing SOFI could provide SpaceX with a practical and lightweight solution to mitigate propellant boil-off, a critical factor in making long-duration fuel storage viable in space. Beyond installation challenges, another key question surrounding orbital refueling is efficiency. How many launches will be needed to fully refuel a station or mission-ready starship? How much propellant can be effectively transferred per flight? While these logistical concerns remain open-ended, NASA's Amit Kshatriya is confident that SpaceX is well aware of the challenges ahead and is systematically addressing them. Orbital refueling is essential to transforming Starship into a true interplanetary vehicle. By enabling the spacecraft to refuel in orbit, Starship will not only be capable of reaching Mars, but could eventually carry humans even farther, to destinations like Saturn and beyond. 
This advancement would revolutionize human spaceflight, paving the way for deep space exploration and the eventual colonization of other worlds. For NASA, this capability is also a major milestone in the Artemis program, which seeks to return humans to the moon for the first time since Apollo. Jeremy Kenny, project manager of NASA's cryogenic fluid management portfolio at Marshall, emphasized the importance of mastering orbital refueling. Storing and transferring cryogenic propellant in orbit has never been attempted on this scale before, but this is a game-changing technology that must be developed and matured for science and exploration missions at the Moon, Mars, and those that will venture even deeper into our solar system. Beyond space exploration, the U.S. Department of Defense is also eyeing a novel application of Starship's refueling and cargo capabilities, what Gary Henry refers to as novel responsive space delivery. This concept involves utilizing Starship to deliver cargo from orbit back to Earth, creating an unprecedented level of logistical flexibility. You've got payloads on orbit, and you want to do something useful with them, and then you want to re-enter them and bring them back and exploit them in some way. We want to leverage what's implicit with your architecture, what's implicit with your system, and do it in a way that's not interference, but additive to the conversation, Henry explained. Orbital refueling is more than a breakthrough. It's the key to unlocking the solar system. With each test, SpaceX brings us closer to a future where Starship enables deep space exploration, fuels lunar missions, and even redefines global logistics. The path ahead is challenging, but history is made by those who dare to push forward. The stars are no longer out of reach. Humanity is on its way, and the journey has only just begun. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Thank you so much for tuning in, and until next time, keep looking up.